Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. In this video, I want to clearly explain the 51% attack and the double spend problem. Now, this is a timely discussion. It was in this week's episode of Silicon Valley. A couple of days ago, we saw Bitcoin Gold's Jack Lew and Dr. Craig Wright get into a heated discussion. And then only today, we've seen Bitcoin Gold hit with a 51% attack. The double spend problem is taken advantage of and the exchanges are the ones that lose millions. So I'm going to talk about why this is and break it down to clearly to understand terms. Check out my proof of work versus proof of stake video we did last week to get your head around the basic concepts, particularly of proof of work mining before you watch the rest of this video. Now in this video, we talk about Bitcoin using a lot of power, but you have to remember in doing so, it creates the most secure computer network in the world. This is millions of times more secure than you know any other computer servers or, or companies out there. Now the double spend problem arises when two people spend the same Bitcoin twice. Now I want to give you a real world example. So let's say my business partner's in London, I'm in Australia, and we both need to sell some Bitcoin. So we both send it to an exchange. Now someone in a, a miner in, in London might verify this and a miner in Australia or nearby in the network might verify my transaction. Now at that point the same Bitcoin has been spent twice and you'll see exchanges need a certain number of confirmations before they actually let that deposit count. Now before all those confirmations take place, the transaction propagates across the network and all these nodes talk to each other and they will realize that, hey, that, that's been spent twice. So at that point, which version of the blockchain is true? And this is where we have the longest chain rule. So if the Bitcoin gets spent twice, whoever mines the next block and has the longest chain the Bitcoin algorithm just picks that as the version of truth. And so let's just say it's my partner in London. His, his Bitcoin will get um, deposited to the exchange. That's the version of truth. And, and mine won't get all those confirmations. Um, it'll say, no, no, that Bitcoin's already been spent. So hopefully that's a reasonable explanation of the longest chain rule. And the block height is simply the number of blocks, how long your chain is. The Genesis block, as it says here, has a block height of zero. So you might have heard that term as well, the block height. And all it's referring to is, you know, how, how long is the chain? The longest chain rule is the true version um, of Bitcoin. So that brings us to the next point about the 51% attack. And if you start to have the majority of the hash rate and the computers creating the new blocks, you can start to create the longest chain. If you want to think of it as two cars going down a highway, one starts to go faster than the other if you've got more hash rate, more hash power. Now we see these mining pools in Bitcoin, all the different people um, you know, helping validate the transactions, but for smaller coins, they have nowhere near as much hash power as Bitcoin. So I'll give you the numbers here about why they're vulnerable and they can be attacked. So Bitcoin's um, hash rate here is 32 million terahashes or 32 exahashes. And we'll talk about how many zeros that number has versus Bitcoin gold that only has 28 mega hashes. So if we go over here, mega hash is a 10 with six zeros. Exahash is a 10 with 18 zeros. So Bitcoin is a million million times more secure, doing more work, okay? It's just orders of magnitude bigger. That's why it only takes a small portion to attack smaller coins that have the same algorithm. So that's very important. You can't attack coins that have, have different algorithms. And we see some coins that are, you know, ASIC resistant, GPU mined, and all, all that sort of thing. Now, you don't really need to understand that. Let's just go back to that longest chain rule to talk about how this can be taken advantage of and, and what happened in Bitcoin gold's case today. So the attackers send the Bitcoin gold from their wallet to an exchange. Now let's just say that that's the gray transaction here, this short short chain. And at that stage, they sell the Bitcoin gold or they change it to another coin and then they withdraw those new coins and they have the new coins in their wallet. But at the same time, because they control now the majority of the hash power, more than 51%, they've got the majority, they start to create an alternate version of the truth here, where they say, no, that transaction never took place. Our coins are still in our wallet, and they confirm that. And then they confirm it with another block, okay? So they're building confirmation that that never took place, What what's happening on the, the current chain as it is. Now, once they're happy that they've withdrawn their other coins, they then can release this version of truth to the network. And that then propagates across the network. 
the nodes all talk to each other and the longest chain rule kicks in where the network automatically says this is the version of truth where those coins never got sent to an exchange even though it's already occurred you've already taken advantage of it withdrawn other coins and that is the 51 percent attack guys so hopefully i've explained that reasonably well that's the example of how it can be double spent and then taken advantage of. It's why the exchanges are the ones that lose millions. Hope that's a clear explanation, guys. Please hit that like button, share these videos around, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for tuning in, guys. Cheers.